internet, welcome to Food Theory. I'd be happy to pick up from there. Let's Lines. do that one again. <laughs> I've eaten a lot of cookie dough in my life. I've never gotten sick. I always know that it's some like remote possibility, but I've eaten a lot of cookie dough. I'm just gonna fess up right now. You roll the dice. I, I live dangerously. You play fast and loose. <laughs> Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that believes a balanced diet is a cookie in each hand. Anything else on your Christmas list? All I want for Christmas is you, Steph. Aww, all I want is a roll of cookie dough. Five years later and it still stings. But here's the thing about cookie dough, friends. It is not like other treats. It has a dangerous side. Like, legitimately dangerous. At some point or another, we've all been told not to eat raw cookie dough. Maybe that warning came from your mom. Maybe as a tot you were perusing the FDA website. Either way, those warnings are coming for two main reasons. First, the presence of raw eggs, a potential hazard due to the risk of salmonella. But also, cookie dough contains raw flour, a potentially harmful ingredient due to the risks of E. coli contamination. And yet, people just don't care. We eat a bunch of it all the time, and practically every ice cream brand under the sun sells some version of cookie dough ice cream. As all of you cookie dough aficionados out there already know, and if the hashtag GTLive is any indication, a truly shocking number of you theorists are cookie dough aficionados, the ingredients in edible cookie dough leave out egg, and usually pasteurize the pesky E. coli. Pasteurization is basically just a fancy schmancy word for heat it up just enough to destroy bad bacteria. The thing is though, cookie dough at its basic level just doesn't have that many ingredients, so at what point of removing ingredients, heating them up, and compressing them into little pellets does cookie dough stop being actual cookie dough? Does the stuff that we see in ice cream, as well as these weird edible products, actually qualify as cookie dough? Well, it seems to me that the point at which something stops being cookie dough is the point at which you you no longer get a cookie when you bake it. So there's only one thing to do if we want to know whether cookie dough ice cream contains actual cookie dough, we have to bake ourselves some cookies. Today we're testing one of our sweetest theories ever. Can you bake cookies? using cookie dough ice cream. So honestly, this one's pretty self-explanatory. There's a bunch of cookie dough in ice cream. Can you actually use it to make cookies? We're gonna pick out all the little pieces of cookie dough from all of this ice cream and then put it in the oven and see if we get a cookie. Step one, extract cookie dough, make cookies out of it. Boom, we're actually not the first to do that experiment. So we're just doing that to show you that it's possible. But then step two is going one step further. Not just showing that you can make cookies using the dough inside of ice cream, but which one has the most dough and also which one has the highest quality dough because I can assure you that you know Edie's slow churned cookie dough dough is not going to yield the same results as Edie's slow churned cookie dough. We have others dough. here I swear. Matt, okay. Matt why did you buy two of these? <laughs> Apparently we have double the amount of cookie dough that we have to get through so let's hop into this. Well the oven's preheating let's do a little background research on chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. Though it's ranked as a top 10 flavor here in the states it actually didn't get sold as a consumer product until the 1990s which is funny considering that pre-made cookie dough has been around since the 1950s. The concept was first suggested to Ben and Jerry's by a fan in 1984. The company tested the idea out by simply mixing raw cookie dough into to their vanilla ice cream at a scoop shop. The idea was a success and it hit store shelves in 1991. Just one year later, 1992, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream accounted for a whopping 20% of Ben & Jerry's ice cream sales. Cue every other ice cream brand on the planet launching their own version. Until today, when you practically trip over this ice cream flavor in every supermarket. The edible dough used in the ice cream is safe to eat without eggs, sometimes without flour, and sometimes heated to 140 to 158 degrees Fahrenheit for pasteurization. That said, we already know from our episode on boxed cake mixes that you don't need eggs for a lot of baking, so maybe we'll find out that the cookie dough inside of ice cream is similar. Or, you know, maybe we'll run into other problems. So it's interesting, as you're spinning this around in here, I'm seeing a lot of chocolate chips. I'm not seeing a lot of dough. The actual dough content is shockingly lacking. This is cookie dough, right? Edie's slow churned cookie dough. There's very little cookie dough. There's like going nothing on in here. here. Hold up, friends. Did the cookie dough melt? Yeah, our quote unquote cookie dough turned out not to have a long shelf life in a melty vat of ice cream. We found that in almost every carton, the dough had become one with the ice cream. If it's actual cookie dough, it shouldn't be able to melt like 
ice cream. Cookie dough is a solid at room temperature. That doesn't make any sense. It is a solid at room temperature, isn't it? So why would it melt? Is that just like it has a high oil content? I think so. These are apparently not solid at room temperature. I think if they weren't made with real butter. I mean, egg is a binding agent. So if it's missing egg, Mmm, craft bite. So if it's missing egg, honestly, it's gonna have trouble. Even though we could explain it with science after the fact, it was still definitely an unexpected setback. That meant that the only path forward was one full of uncomfortable footage of us sifting through ice cream and giving ourselves frostbite. So this is gonna take longer than we thought. Yeah, we gotta pick this out individually. Okay. We'll see you in a couple hours. This is something that was suggested to us on Reddit. Thanks, Reddit. Matt, do you eat raw cookie dough? He does. Of course. What kind of monster doesn't eat cookie dough? I'm always nervous to eat raw cookie dough. My mom scared me straight. She taught me right. My mom made me scared of escalators. My fingers are burning. Your fingers already don't have a lot of circulation. I know. This did not help. This is HT, the oh. old Harris Teeter. So if you know past Food Theory episodes, you know that HT is coming in with a high bar of excellence. Represent for generics, HT. Let's see how you do. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Why is this channel so gross? So much for this one being a quick shoot. We're like, oh yeah, we'll be in and out of this one in no time. This will be fine. Little did we suspect that the dough would melt at room temperature. Which already says that this is like pretty far off of actual cookie dough. It's already pretty sussy. Gotta say. At the beginning of filming, I actually went on a bit of a rant about how we bought way too much ice cream for this experiment. This is a legitimate question for Matt. Here, let me move my microphone to him. Matt, why, why are we doing it? Why did you buy two of these? But all of those backup cartons actually ended up being the saving grace of the episode. There's no egg on my face or in the dough that we extracted from the ice cream. Thank you very much. So, Steph and I taste tested each carton. Mmm, I love ice cream. Ice cream makes me so happy. Then manually pluck the cookie dough out of each partially frozen ice cream container. So, there you have it, friends. You buy a half gallon of Edie's ice cream and this is about as much as you get when it comes to cookie dough. Come on, that's like, that's a couple of tablespoons, maybe. After like an hour of chili plucking, we finally had the cookie dough that we needed to carry out some tests between the chocolate chip cookie dough ice creams of three top selling ice cream brands, Ben and Jerry's, Edie's, and Briars, a smaller national brand, Mayfield, as well as Food Theory's own favorite private label underdog, which also happens to be available in our area, Harris Teeter. So after much painstaking extraction, we finally have all our cookie dough out of the ice cream. Our fingers have sufficiently warmed back to regular status and we're ready to compare and immediately you can see the size difference with each amount of cookie dough right you have briars over here it's got a hefty handful of whatever cookie dough thing is inside of it whereas you got like all natural store brand over here HT, come on, man. Not even filling the bottom of the cup. Ben and Jerry's also strong showing with huge pieces, even though you're drawing from a smaller overall amount of ice cream. The question I have though, is how does this compare with what a traditional cookie looks like? Stephanie actually has a real cookie dough that we're gonna be comparing all of these against. And uh, I don't know. So what is the standard size of a cookie, Steph? The serving size is two level tablespoons, which is actually a pretty good size cookie. That's it's, a it's a big, it's a Biggin. That's one, this is one cookie? Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know if any of these will be able to meet one cookie. Four of the five did, in fact, contain enough to make a two tablespoon ball of dough. Harris Teeter's all natural brand chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, it fell a bit shy. There was just one tablespoon of cookie dough in its entire 48 ounce container. So we were forced to make a mini cookie for old Harris Teeter. Sorry friend, I still love your diet cola. This one is crazy. You have this giant tub of ice cream and you don't even, I don't even think that's enough dough for one cookie out of the whole thing. I don't know about you, but this is actually really surprising to me. It kind of makes you wonder how much ingredient needs to be in a thing in order for it to qualify as that thing. It's a theory episode for another day. For fun, we calculated the percentage of cookie dough in each ice cream. Harris Teeter was obviously the lowest at 1%, while Ben & Jerry's was by far the highest at 6.3% cookie dough by volume. Because its container was three and a half times larger than the Ben & Jerry's, the Briars container actually wound up with the most overall cookie dough, a whopping four and three quarters tablespoons. So here's our six. This we did it, you guys. Now the question is, which one is actually going to result in the best overall cookie? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we wait a couple minutes. They're they're so small. The Harris Teeter one will cook in like, what, three minutes? I don't know. I think, yeah, I think we're going to have to grab the HT out a little bit sooner. But our goal is to cook them to the appropriate amount 
for them. So we're gonna try and cater to their individual interests and needs in the oven and give us the best possible like shot at each yeah. one. Each of our cookie dough balls is its own special flower <laughs> that we wanna tend and nurture in its own way. But if you think Steph and I sat around and did nothing while the cookies were in the oven, you're sorely mistaken. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Matthew. You know what's sweeter than cookies made out of cookie dough ice cream? Holiday merch from Theorywear. That's right. So while we don't have any food theory specific merch, we do have a wide variety for you to choose from, including <gasps> This theorist to channel merch box. Wow, it covers all four channels. That's amazing. And covers basically anything you could want out of your holiday merchandise. Look, it's a notebook. Socks. Wow, it's key a chain. pin. Oh, is that is it a keychain? It's, it's, it's a keychain. It's, it's a spinner keychain, key sorry. Maybe you got pin confused with pen. Pen. Metal, metal pen. Do you know when I first moved to North Carolina as a six-year-old, people were with really heavy accents would say pin. They'd be like, hand me that pin. Well, and I'd be like, a pin? What do you need with a pin? And they'd be like, a pin, a pin. And I'd be like, what are you talking? I would literally be like, what are you talking about? Well, whether it's a pin or a pen, it's available in this Theorist branded gift box. Next item. Drinking tea all winter long with my awesome Theorywear mug. That's a box, Stephanie. I know, but there's a mug inside it. Oh, thank you for showing off the mug. Look, it has my favorite molecule and yours, the caffeine. <laughs> the caffeine. I'm addicted. It's bad. <laughs> Matt, hit me up with some other things we can show up to the camera. Taking all day. Thanks so much, Matt. We've got this really cool jacket. Beautiful, it's warm, it's super silky and soft. It's it's very, it's it's a thick boy. It'll keep you warm in the winter. It's great. It's got a tiger on the back. Do you have the eye of the tiger? You can with Theory merch. Oh God, that almost hit a leg. It did, that was very close. I was very concerned. Hit me with another one. Speaking of stuff that covers all the Theory channels. Whoa! Oh. But look, all your favorite logos from all your favorite YouTube channels all on the same snuggly blanket. And it covers up your family members who you don't want to look at anymore during the holidays. <laughs> That's right. Theory wear available right now below this video. And at that point, the cookies came out of the oven, which gotta say, kind of a bummer because we had plenty more theory wear bits up our sleeves. But alas, those will have to wait for another holiday season. Ladies and gentlemen, we have cookies. We're back a little while later. The cookies are all done. They're cooled and look, they're pretty much cookies. Yeah, it turns out that when you extract the cookie dough from cookie dough ice cream, you get something that approximates a cookie. You've, so you've got our control cookie here, which was made using right. actual inedible cookie dough with the raw eggs and everything. Inedible. I've eaten so much of that cookie dough, it's not even funny. For legal purposes, I have to encourage you to not eat raw eggs or raw flour. Yep. Don't don't be a Stephanie. Don't do it. Don't be a Stephanie. So this is our control group. So this is what a cookie should look like. Uh, you see Edie's? Eh, there might be a couple of differences there. Spot the difference. Briars, surprisingly solid. Yep. Uh, really good. So Mayfield Farm, also pr a pretty good cookie-ish kind of thing. But clearly the best showing. Ben and Jerry's. Coming from Ben and Jerry's. At least from the visual. Uh, maybe worst performance is the old HT. Now, the appearance of these cookies actually tells us a fair amount about what ingredients might be out of proportion in our ice cream cookie dough cookies. Thanks to this handy guide from Delish, it would seem at a glance that the Edie's and Harris Teeter doughs lacked flour. Briars and Ben and Jerry's seems to have a baking powder quality to them. And by the looks of that Mayfield cookie, its ingredients might have been mixed together all at once. So that's the visual assessment, but obviously comes the taste assessment. So uh, I think we start with our control group, get a sense of what a cookie should taste like. And then move on to the competitors. It's a Nestle Toll House, it's so good. Man, I haven't had a good chocolate chip cookie in a long time. This mm, actually- That was great. That's a solid cookie. I don't want to move on. Well, let's move on. Mmm, Edie's. Chocolate wafer cookie. If you hold it up to the light, there aren't even very many chocolate chips in there. You, you might not see it among, amongst the burned brown color. It's worth noting also that I don't think this is burned. We cooked it long enough so that it was just like kind of solid on the pan. It, we did not cook it to like a level that's crispy. Like it's still bendy and so, ooh, it flaps like a bird. It's so weird. What is that, brown sugar? Is that what it is? It's just a high amount of brown sugar? It's just brown sugar and butter, you guys. It's not cookie at all. It doesn't have that cakey texture. It's actually gummy. It's gummy. It's not nice. It's, it's kind of like sweet goo in your mouth. It's not nice, okay. Cookie, yeah, maybe not so much. Briars, L looks legitimately cookie. Not a whole lot of chips on the front, but on the back, you actually see a, a decent a amount number. of embedded chocolate chips. Okay. Oh. See? Oh, it's very, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird texture. Yeah. It tastes like they made this with a lot of artificial ingredients to replicate the look and feel of cookie dough, but it does not have the taste of an actual cookie at all. Yeah. It feels like a computer made a, a chocolate cookie. chip cookie. They were like, this is a chocolate chip cookie. This looks and appears like a chocolate chip cookie. 
it doesn't taste like it. Turns out that artificial chemically flavor is actually a telltale sign of too much baking powder. As we predicted from the visual, it's likely there to create a puffy texture even without egg, but maybe they overdid it just a little. Onward to the next. All right, next up is let's go with uh, the Mayfield. Oh, okay. That's the best one so far. I'm having like a hard time chewing this puppy, but it does taste like a chocolate. Yeah, this one so far tastes the most like our control group. It's like you went on the show, nailed it, and they asked you to make a chocolate chip cookie, and no one knew how to make a chocolate chip cookie. This is it. Yeah, I think that's right. That we're like, sort of the flavor is right, and sort of the look is right, but really it's not great. Yeah, if you squint at it, it's passable. Okay. Uh, next up, HT. HT. H <laughs> the HT cookie cracker. Oh, listen to that snap. Oh. Oh, it's just sugar. It's just cooked sugar. There's nothing of substance here. And again, Think about this. Sugar is soluble in water. So when we think about the ones that really dissolved where it was impossible for us to fish out okay. the bits of cookie dough from the warm ice cream, um, it makes complete sense. It's really interesting. And, and this is, I think, the most exciting part of this experiment, right? Each one is different in its own way. Like, no two of these has tasted the same or had the same problem. It seems like everyone's trying to figure out a way to get safe cookie dough into their ice cream in an effective, cost-effective way, but they're doing it with different methods. It's very interesting, actually. Which brings us to what looks to be the most cookie-like of all of them, which is Ben & Jerry's. Fingers crossed. Huh. Huh. It definitely has the crispy edge problem. It's definitely harder to chew than the control. Yeah, all of all of these are gummier than the this control cookie. Are you using aquafaba? Aquafaba. 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 I'm, I'm using aquafaba. I'm using aquafaba. No one has any clue what we're talking about. What is aquafaba? I don't have a clue what we're talking about. I don't know what aquafaba. Is. We're in the middle of watching Great British Baking Show. Anyway, I will say, this is the best cookie of all of the cookie dough ice creams that we tested. But again, still slightly different. So for those of you keeping track at home, Ben and Jerry swept today's categories. Their ice cream had the highest cookie dough percentage by volume. Their cookie dough resulted in the best looking and best tasting cookie. Though I gotta say, being the best tasting ice cream derived cookie is not all that much of an accomplishment. I definitely would not sit down and eat any of these cookies today by choice. Aside of course from the control group, that one was darn delicious. The takeaway here is that if you really do care about cookie dough purity and accuracy in your ice cream, don't, because you're not going to get it from any sort of ice cream. But if you do, the closest thing you're going to get is Ben & Jerry's. Everything else is a cookie dough substitute or look-alike. Maybe get some vanilla ice cream and mix the dough together. Mm. Go visit the Toll House. We should have done that. What? That would have been great. Oh, get ice cream and mix it together with cookie dough? Yeah! Mm. Just make your own. Why not? Oh! <gasps> <gasps> But hey, that's just a theory, a food theory. Bon appetit. Can I take another bite? Oh, I didn't want to bite that one. I nope. wanted, nope. wanted to grab the control. There you go. There it is. Thanks for watching, theorists. If you're still screaming for more ice cream, definitely check out our episode on McFlurries. We made fast food desserts into cakes. Why? Because TikTok said we could. And also, apparently, because turning frozen treats into baked goods is our thing now. It's good to try new hobbies. Speaking of things to try, why not try hitting that subscribe button? See if that's a hobby that suits you. Not a lot of people who watch this channel are subscribed, so if you're looking for quality weekly food theories coming straight to your mouth holes, well, that's a subscription that's gonna pay off.